Hey there, everybody. It is Teresa with the Intentional Classroom, and I am excited to bring you another installment of our beauty exam review blast or whatever that playlist is called. Today, we're going to talk about layers of the skin, and here's why. I've been doing a lot of tutoring with Cosmo students that have either graduated some time ago or graduating right now, and this this continues to become an issue because it continues to be an area of concern that students kind of come to the table with that they don't truly understand. And I think it's because most Cosmo programs kind of breeze over skin and nails. They do just enough to get you past the test, but not necessarily enough so that you truly understand. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Layers of the skin. All, all of them, epidermis, dermal layer, pap, you know, all, all of the layers, subcutaneous, really getting you kind of that knowledge that you need for your exam, okay? So let me get this to move forward for me. Um, if you don't know who I am and who the Intentional Classroom is, is I represent the Intentional Classroom as the CEO and founder. Um, we are also now Cosmetology Exam Review, which is new. So I am slowly but surely releasing courses, and at some point we'll have a bundle course covering all of the hot topics that you will need to know for your actual exam. Doesn't matter what state you're in, this will apply to any Cosmo, Barber, aesthetic students out there. You can pick and choose the modules you want, or you can buy the entire package. So slowly but surely, those are getting live, but that, that is new, Cosmetology Exam Review from the intentional classroom. We are teachers. Uh, it's me and a gang of people behind me that come from the industry and have been teaching in the industry for quite some time. We're also stylists, estheticians, barbers, massage therapists. We are people with the credential, with the license. We have lived the world you're in, and we are here to really kind of give you our experiences, okay? We are also students. We are always learning. We are all, always doing research to bring you the best, most current information that you could possibly need. And finally, we, we try to be game changers. We are trying to level up this industry and really give you guys everything you need to not only be successful in your first year out there, but building a sustainable career. We work with Beautycast Network. We work with like, can we work with Pivot Point? We work with Milady. We work with everybody to really help you guys get out there and make, you know, make an impact on our industry. So that's who we are. If you haven't yet, take a second, subscribe to our YouTube, you know, go share it, like it, go watch all the other videos because we're really working hard to kind of create content for you to help you through your studies and through your exam. <clears throat> Again, go ahead, follow, do all the things. I'm not going to keep wasting your time. Let's talk about some layers of the skin, shall we? So today's learning objectives are going to be quick. We're going to first explore the epidermis, all five layers, what their name is, how you might you know, remember them in some ways and what their function is. Then we'll get into the dermal layer or the dermis, two layers in there. We're going to talk about the papillary and reticular layer, what they do, what you find in those things. And then finally, we'll touch on that subcutaneous layer and really how these things could show up on your test, because that's what this is all about, right? Prepping you for the exam, making sure you have the tools you need. So without any more, you know, pausing, let's talk skin. Let's talk about those layers of the skin, which you will need to know. Why does it matter? Well, as cosmetologists and estheticians, we have the ability to work within the top few layers of that skin, okay? We have to know what we're dealing with, what it is in there, and, and what functions it brings to our skin so that we know what we're messing with, right? We never want to mess with something without knowing what the impact could be. Finally, we need to know what happens. We, we have to understand what happens in each layer so that we can do this safely. We don't want to hurt people. We don't want to, you know, I mean, we don't want to be like burning layers of skin off. And if we don't understand what happens in each layer, that's exactly what can happen. Okay. So we're going to start with our three layers of skin, right? Epidermis, the dermal layer or the dermis in the subcutaneous layer. It's that there's three main layers, that's it. But then of course, each layer is broken down into further layers. So let's get into the epidermis. This is the outermost layer. This is the skin that we see. This is what I'm tattooed on, right? Is my, my epidermis, my outermost layer of skin. Inside of that contains five other layers, okay? Very thin layers, right? This is not something that you can just see. You have to have it under a microscope to actually see those. But the epidermis is the skin that we actually see, okay? We don't see our dermal layer. If we do, it's more than just a flesh wound. We have an actual problem if we see our dermal layer, okay? So the epidermis is something that we show. It is what we see every single day. 
There are five layers of the epidermis, okay? These are certain to appear on your exam in some way. I don't care what state you work in, it will show up on your exam. So take the time to make some flashcards, use some Quizlet, right? Memorize each layer, know what is in each layer, how to recognize them and any function that they might bring to the table because your, your state exam could ask any of it, okay? If you are an aesthetic student, same thing. You really gotta know what's going on in these layers. So make some flashcards and be prepared for them to show up on your test. So the five layers are the stratum corneum, the stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basal. Okay. We're going to go a little deeper into those now and talk about what is in each layer and how we recognize them. We're going to start on the outermost layer, which is the stratum corneum. Okay. This is the very top layer of your epidermis. All right. It has 20 to 30 layers of cells. So it is on the thicker side in terms of in, you know, in proportion compared to some of the other layers. It is made of keratin, just like your hair is, just like your nails are, okay? It varies in thickness from person to person and areas of your actual, your body, okay? Um, it serves as part of our first immune or defense, all right? It's going to help prevent bacteria from entering into our body. So that is the stratum corneum. It is the outermost layer. And like I said, its main purpose is to really protect everything else. It's 20 to 30 layers of cells. So it's really there to protect everything else in inside of your body. So that's the stratum corneum. That's the outermost layer. The next layer is the stratum lucidum. Okay. So the stratum lucidum is the second layer. Um, it's only two to three cell layers. So it's not nearly as thick and it's only actually found on the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet. So the stratum lucidum is not found everywhere on our body. All right. It is considered a transparent layer because now all of those skin cells have come become very, very see-through. They're very, very transparent. I remember this when I think of um, lucid or translucent, right? Translucent is when something is, we can see through it, transparency, all of that is lucid, right? So stratum lucidum is translucent or transparent. It's a see-through layer. This offers additional protection and allows for the skin to stretch, okay? So especially on our feet, on our hands, right? We need that extra stretch, that extra movement, because this skin is really dealing with the most environmental concern, right? The most impact from outside things. So that is your stratum lucidum. Again, only found on the palms and soles, right? It's not found everywhere in your body. When it's there, it's the second layer. The third layer down is called the stratum granulosum. This is our third layer. This is three to five layers of cells, okay? It contains diamond-shaped cells, okay? Diamond-shaped cells that are very, very small and begin to kind of flatten themselves. So, so instead of being round, they start to kind of flatten out into a diamond like this. And they're very, very small, like granules, right? So often the question will ask something like, which layer has granular-like cells um, that have become very, very small and are diamond-shaped? It could be that then it's the granulosum, right? Granular granulosum. What the stratum granulosum does is it offers like a water sealant against your inside. So this prevents outside water from going right into your bloodstream basically, okay? That's your stratum granulosum. So over here, you'll see, I have like a caulk gun, right? Um, that's basically what it's doing is it's sealing everything in so that the water can't just kind of flow into your body. Okay. Then you have your fourth layer, which is your stratum spinosum. Okay. This is eight to 10 cell layers. It's also known as the prickle cell layer. Okay. I have not actually seen that on a test, but I thought I found the information. I thought I should share it, that it could be known as the prickle cell layer. The stratum spinosum is actually responsible for the skin's strength and flexibility. Okay. That elasticity, that, you know, that ability to kind of stretch back and come back to where it's supposed to, you know, it's, it's that ability to kind of, you know, gain a little weight and go back into weight and still have some, your, most of your skin where it's supposed to sit, it's our ability to have a baby and then your skin to kind of kind of go back to where it's supposed to. That's due to the strength of the stratum spinosum. Okay. It's made of little spiny little protrusions that help 
help you prevent your skin from tearing or blistering. It allows the skin to stretch. Like imagine if we didn't have this layer and you got pregnant and your skin couldn't stretch the way it needed to, it would literally just tear, right? That's not what we want. The, strat the stratum spinosum allows that stretch and that return back to where it needs to be. So spiny, um, spiny protrusions, spinosum, spiny spinosum, where they try to kind of match those two together, prevents the skin from tearing and blistering, gives our skin strength, okay? And then the final there, I don't know why my, um, my, my actions are funny on here, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. The stratum basal is actually the fifth layer of the skin. So the, the lowest layer of the epidermis that we have is the stratum basal. It's also known as the stratum germinativum. That's how I learned it in school, actually. So you probably want to make sure that your flashcards represent both the stratum basal and the germinativum because I have seen germinativum on a test before, okay? This is where your stem cells are located, okay? And this is where all of the new skin cells are born. It's also where the melanin is produced. So if you really think about it, it's kind of like a factory. So the image I have to the left here is a factory because all of this stuff is being produced in these, in that bottom layer and then pushed up through the other layers until the skin sheds and turns into dust. Cause that is what dust is, is it's typically dead skin cells. Yay. Delicious. Amazing. I know I'm excited. All right. So that's the stratum basal layer. That's the factory. That's where all of those things, the melanin is produced, the more melanin that is produced, the darker our skin is. Okay. That brings us through the five layers of the epidermis. Then we go one layer down into the dermal layer, okay? So the dermal layer has two layers inside. It has a papillary layer and it has a reticular layer. All right, so let's talk about those two layers. Start with papillary, okay? A lot of the magic that we know about skincare happens in these two layers. We should not be messing with the dermal layer. If you get to the dermal layer, you're going to draw blood, okay? If you've ever scratched yourself and no blood came forward, it's because you had an excoriation or a mechanical abrasion on the epidermis layers of the skin. You did not get into the dermal layer. If you get into the dermis, that's where blood lives. That's when you get that deeper cut, okay? And that's when you've hit the papillary layer, okay? Um, and then you have your reticular. Okay, so the papillary layer is the top layer of the dermis. So we're still underneath that epidermis, but it's the top layer of the dermis. It's composed of collagen fibers. It supplies nutrients to our skin, okay, and to our body. So we need those nutrients to keep producing collagen and to make sure our skin remains supple. It also helps regulate our body temperature because this is what contains our blood vessels. I mean, not the only place, but a lot of our blood vessels are in that papillary layer, okay? So that's something you need to remember. It supplies nutrients. It's the first layer of the dermis um, and contains the blood vessels, okay? Your reticular layer is the second layer of the dermis. So that's right below the papillary layer, also made of collagen. This helps provide further strength. I know I talked about the spinosum does, but so does the reticular layer. This is where everything lives. This is where your hair follicles live, your sudoriferous glands or your sweat glands, right? Sudoriferous is sweat. Your sebaceous glands or your oil glands, sebum, sebaceous, okay? This is where all of those things live. It also houses our nerve endings. So once we get into that reticular layer, that's where we start to really feel pain, okay? So you may have scratched yourself and be like, ooh, that hurt a little bit. And then you scratch yourself deep and it hurt more than just a little bit, right? Because we, this is where all of your pain receptors and all the other nerve endings live is that reticular layer. And that's your dermis. It's only the two layers, okay? So you've got the epidermis with five layers, the dermis with two layers, and then we get into the subcutaneous layer. This is our deepest layer of skin, okay? This is your body fat. So some of us have a little more cushion, right? Some of us have a little more protection. That's why I like to think I'm the size I am is because I needed a little more cushion. Um, I know some of you are thinking that back half of what I'm saying, don't be naughty, okay? Provides cushion, it provides protection to our organs, to our skeletal system, you know? So no, it's not healthy to have 0% fat in your body because you need fat. You need that, that fatty tissue to protect your body. Do you need as much as I have? Probably not, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it, okay? So that is your subcutaneous layer. 
That's it. There's no layers in that one, guys. So you have three main layers. You have your epidermis, which has the five layers. You have your dermis, which has two layers. And then you have your subcutaneous layer. Okay. That is your layers of your skin, guys. Okay. So just remember, go to cosmetologyexamreview.com. I have the hair color um, course already available. It comes with eight practice tests, a final, um, a review. I mean, it comes with all sorts of resources. I'm going to be releasing the texture one this next week because it's pretty much complete at this point. And I've got someone working on the skincare one. I have an actual esthetician doing the skincare one for me. So slowly but surely, if you go ahead and subscribe to the site, guys, you'll know when the courses come out. But also remember, I have tons of video on YouTube for free. Go look at them. They're there to help you. I create them simply as a free resource for the classroom for students. So please go subscribe, share, do all the things that you need to do, okay? Thank you so much for watching me today. I appreciate you giving me, I don't know, how long have I been talking? Probably about 15 minutes of your time. Um, and can't wait to bring you some more material in the very near future. So have an awesome, awesome day, everybody.